Thank you. And Derek Orber is also there, but not uh, on the video yet. I will uh, start to introduce uh, the, the panel uh, members. Uh, before introducing them shortly, hi, Francois, we are now, you're visible Hello. now. Uh, before uh, uh, I introduce the panel members, I uh, would like to inform the panel members that I, after the introduction, each one of you, I, I will ask you to reflect in one minute shortly on what research findings that were presented, uh, presented the previous hour did surprise you most or uh, that you did consider for yourself as a take home message. Now, uh, while you can think about this, uh, I will uh, introduce you. Uh, first, uh, Miguel Aguera from Spain. Miguel is uh, already for many years uh, very uh, active internationally. He participated in several international advisory committees on animal welfare issues and is recently also very much involved in uh, issues how to uh, connect producers and consumers via labeling uh, systems. Uh, Trine Vig uh, Tamsborg from uh, Denmark, from the Danish Agricultural and Food uh, Council. Uh, welcome uh, Trine, happy that you're here. Uh, Robert Römer is from uh, QS uh, Germany, uh, the organization in Germany that is uh, responsible for the quality assurance in food. And in this institute, all the segments of the food supply chain in Germany are uh, participating. Then we have uh, François Rouet from Brit uh, Bretagne in France. He's a leading board member of the French uh, pig producers, and he was also the driving force in the conference that has been taken place in Paris in January 2019 on animal welfare. Uh, we have also uh, uh, Jürgen Ehlers. Uh, Jürgen Ehlers is a a pig farmer in Lower Saxony in uh, Germany, and he is also very uh, yeah, involved in a recent initiative uh, under the so-called 100,000 pigs, and we will discuss that later on, uh, Jörn, with you. Uh, and then we have uh, Derek Orberg from the Vion Food uh, Company in the Netherlands. Uh, Derek is responsible for quality assurance and uh, in his company also involved in the production and marketing of entire meals to major retail uh, organizations in the Netherlands. So these are the, the panel members. And uh, may I start with you, uh, Miguel, to give your uh, first reflection on the uh, presentation so far. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay, thank you, Heli. Very, very, very good morning for everyone, and also thank you very much for for inviting me. As the first reflection of the PEMA, uh, I think I would like to, to congratulate all of you because I think it's a very, very complex uh, summary and also reflection about what is happening in this castration. Because when we were speaking well, 10 years ago, we are starting the debate of the, of the castration, what's a debate about animal welfare? Right now, it's not only animal welfare, as you have shown in this presentation. Also, it's farm management, it's genetic, it's feed, it's meat quality, it's industry, it's the consumer. So it's a huge complex issue. And I would like also to congratulate all of you to, to try to tackle all these issues. Uh, the results. I quite online with the results because I think this is the direction that we have to take. We know that uh, a lot of years ago, the common practice is to, to, to castrate the animals. I come from Spain. We are the major producer in the world in, in entire meal. So we are very used to produce entire meal. We also castrate the animals for a specific products and also for a specific productions. But I think this is the direction that we have to take. And also the comparison between anesthetic, not anesthetic in monocastration, that is a very quite good alternative for the for, for the futures. And, and and I think everything has been very good. I think also two things to, to say that I miss one point for the farmer point of view is, is to speak a little bit more about the cost of productions in the different system because there are also different costs of production for the management of the animals and I think there are there are quite different not only in one of the things that you have focused your attention it is in the quality of the meat also for the farmer it's important the quantity so how much of the system produce you more quantity for a square meter in your factoring units 
and also for all the new information that we have already in the practical point of view about tail docking in and the system in Spain that we produce a lot of entailments, we have a very good relation between the entailment production and the increase the tail docking. So right now, when we are um, developing the action plan to try to avoid the tail docking, and we make a comparison between farm in in thermal productions against another systems, uh, we saw that there are an increase of percentage of tail docking when we are producing in thermal, maybe because of course there are more activity and there are need for, for, for looking for my husband. Or, so maybe this is a problem of the uh, lack of enriched material. But right now we, we are seeing the difference very clear in the tail docking with the, with the animals. For the other aspect, this is a, a short introduction and, and congratulations for the, for the presentation on all the PEMA project. Thank you, Miguel. And we come back to the production cost issue uh, later. Uh, may I ask you, uh, Robert, to give your reflection? Robert Römer from Germany. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Guy. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, yes, uh, so I... Uh, I support the words of uh, Miguel because I really see a good work which uh, is done here in IPEMA and I see that IPEMA is a really good network of scientists, stakeholders and supporter for the alternatives for castration. But um, for me was um, really um, a big point to see the consumer acceptance in the different countries all over Europe and to see that um, our work which we have done together during the last 10 years <clears throat> in showing all the stakeholders the alternatives, good alternatives for orchestration um, is not uh, finished because we have to do a lot more and to convince uh, most of the stakeholders in the supply chain to work together and to um, change hopefully um, in future the way how piglets were treated. Thank you. François Weber, Bretagne, France. Good morning, everybody. Uh, yes, um, I'm a farmer in Brittany and produce pigs, and I represent the French pigs farmers in, in Europe about the welfare issue. And uh, congratulations about your, your meeting. It's very, very interesting. And it's um, a complete uh, meeting because you you have an approach big with all of the different questions about the anti male uh, castration with anesthesia or with and uh, immuno castration and it's very very interesting and uh, to a few points about the French in France we have um, uh, there are few people that produce anti male and they also they continue to castrate with analgesia and now we have discussion about to use anesthesia for the future and uh, we have a very difficult discussion in France it's about the immunocastration because um, the farmers and uh, part of the industry don't accept this and the consumers uh, don't like this in France. We have a lot of questions about the immunocastration. It's not, um, we, we think it's not an issue for the future, the immunocastration. And, uh, but I have a small question. It's about the, the, the presentation when we, you, you started. But I have a question about um, when you make the, the, about the consumers at acceptance. Did you ask just only the the European country, or you ask the consumers in a third country? It's uh, because I don't heard this. Perhaps I I don't understand everything. But it's a question: if there are people, they they do you ask the for about the acceptance about third country? Thank you very much. Uh, we will give later on Marek the opportunity to respond to your uh, question about uh, the population uh, of respondents. Uh, Trine Vig from Denmark. 
Yes, good morning. And I also want to congratulate the team uh, behind this project. I think uh, huge progress has been made since you started out this project. And it clearly shows the benefit of bringing so many different uh, stakeholders and scientists together. Uh, what is really standing out from the many presentation is the uh, the need, if we are to be successful with entire males, we really have to, um, um, there are really many steps that needs to be taken. We have to consider feeding, breeding, um, uh, management, the welfare of, of raising entire males and the sorting out and then the handling of the meat and the quality issues. There's so many elements. It's not just about raising entire bulls. And it also shows uh, very cr clearly that th there are many of these issues which the farmer does not have any control of. So we really have to work together through the whole value chain if we are to succeed in this area. I think it was also clear that uh, Improvac uh, is a solution where we can shortcut many of these issues. So of course it should be an, an obvious um, road also, but we do have a huge consumer issue and that is something we need to focus on in the future, uh, that we need consumer information and, and, and have the dialogue with consumers about these solutions. That's, a, that's where I see the big gap now. Okay, thank you, Adrienne. Meanwhile, a practical question for Martin that Derek Urborg is saying that he thinks he cannot react in the Zoom meeting. So Martin, if you can look uh, at this issue, then I will first ask Jürgen Ehlers from Germany to uh, give his first reaction. Good morning, everybody. Um, yes, um, I'm uh, surprised how big are the differences uh, in uh, Europe. Uh, how uh, uh, much difference we got uh, about the systems and how much difference we got about uh, farmers and uh, cons consumers uh, in, in this uh, team. And um, I think uh, we got a lot of uh, good information about immun immunocastration and uh, a lot of good uh, results that we have seen this morning. And uh, so I'm uh, really surprised that uh, we are not able to open the market for the system in Germany uh, until yet. And uh, that's uh, also uh, what we are thinking about uh, a lot um, in, the, in the farming uh, association, uh, how we can um, open the market and how we get um, the immune castration um, to be a part of the solution of the uh, castration discussion. And um, I think uh, one of the key messages um, of the presentation for me is um, that uh, it's important to share the costs and uh, also to share the benefits. Uh, in a fair way and uh, so I think uh, if we do this uh, then we can um, also open the market in Germany. Thank you very much. Now Derek uh, you are now uh, connected uh, so please uh, I give you the floor to give your reflection on the presentations. Well thank you very much um, and I first want to of course congratulate the entire team. I think you've done an amazing job. Uh, it's a very complex uh, matter that is at hand and you also see that um, there are quite some different viewpoints throughout Europe um, on many topics on both the farmer perspective, the uh, processing perspective and the consumer perspective. So I think uh, this, is a, this is a great start of, um, of, of many uh, further work uh, ahead. Um, and, and, and I can only um, reflect or, or um, uh, a mirror what has been said before. I, uh, I think um, uh, we should listen very carefully to, to the market and understand what, uh, what they want. Uh, and I really believe, especially with the, with the very positive experiences we had in many countries in raising boars, that there is a, uh, that there is a very um, fruitful way ahead. Thank you very much. Now, uh... I would like to go to Robert. Uh, Jürgen Ehler talked about already there are huge differences in Europe. Uh, Trina, about many steps that have to be taken. Uh, it is not an easy uh, and sometimes a bumpy road. But um, in Germany, we had a few years ago, some companies started uh, to work with uh, uh, non meat from non-castrated pigs. But during the last few years, uh, we did not really see a breakthrough on this uh, in Germany, Robert. Uh, could you share your ideas on this, your thoughts? What are the bottlenecks and what is lacking for a breakthrough? Um, yes, Kay. Um, I think the, 
the last part of your question is significant. Um, we do not have one bottleneck. We have a lot of crucial points. Um, from my perspective, on the one hand, um, we have on the farm side the specific behaviors of the entire males. And um, not all farmers are familiar with the specific requirement to manage entire males, to avoid injuries, to have the experience for housing, management, feeding, and so on. <clears throat> on um, as well on the farm side, we have the the market demands which are not uh, clear. So uh, most of the farmers have to negotiate to see whether they can castrate or not. Um, and the main point, which is as well mentioned from other participants, is um, connected to the refund of the costs because with the different um, ways to treat the piglets, you have different costs. On the um, <clears throat> supply chain, we have as well the slaughterhouses, which has the need to separate the carcasses, the animals, to have the detection of boa taint, um, um, what can they do with <clears throat> the tainted carcasses, um, the marketing of the non-castrated uh, pigs is not easy in uh, most of the situations. Um, you have for the boars, uh, of course, the softer fat, leaner meat, so a problem for the dry and cure products. You have the export markets and as well the expectation of the domestic markets, which is relevant for the processing companies too, who um, process the meat which is coming from entire males, whether they are uh, treated with Improvac or not, or the immunocastrated. And at the end, we have the retailers, the wholesalers, caterers, uh, restaurants, and the butchers. Um, um, which have to sell the meat which is coming from um, the entire males from the immunocastrated pigs and so on. <clears throat> the consumer acceptance was uh, one thing which I mentioned before, which was really uh, impressive to see that most of the consumers um, accept the castration with anesthesia. Um, I'm not sure whether they differentiate between the full anesthesia or local anesthesia. Um, and if they uh, are aware of the discussions which we have specific in Germany about the different interpretation of pain relief uh, during castration. But there are a lot of things. And from my perspective, it's uh, really necessary to uh, work together that all stakeholders in the supply chain should act together and um, effective uh, together and to uh, show as well to the consumers and to all the stakeholders uh, what are the really the, the advantages of changing the production system. Fine, may I ask you to reflect on this? Uh, Robert is saying it's very complex, but we need to work together. Can we organize uh, the supply chains, all the segments to work together? To working on this? It's a big question because in the end, it's the, the consumers who's really the, um, the one that has to make the final decision and the surveys we have done or we have uh, Aarhus University did a quite extensive survey of the Asian markets and the acceptance of the different alternatives to uh, surgical castration and we just don't see any openings on the Asian markets and as long as we don't uh, see any any movement on these markets, it will be difficult to, to move ahead. So uh, that's also important when we talk about consumer acceptance. Acceptance. It's not enough that we look at the European market. We have to look at the global market when we address this issue because we have a carcass balance that we we, uh, we have to realize that that has to, to work also. We cannot yeah. only uh, solve it on the European market. Yeah. Uh, we know that you and Denmark are working on the so-called instrumental methods for detection. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, has been mentioned last year also. Uh, could you inform us uh, about uh, the latest, uh, about the state of the art of the technology? <laughs> how, far, uh, how far is Denmark uh, uh, in this new technology? 
Yes, we have a, a, a it's Danish Meat Research Institute who has developed the, the instruments and they have done all the pilot studies and they have come out good. So right now it's uh, under implementation at one of our slaughterhouses. So we don't have any uh, results from them yet. It's still being implemented, but uh, the pilot studies look very positive. But again, we still have the issue that depending on the uh, um, thresholds that we put into the system, how do we deal with the uh, meat that is bought tainted? We still have some issues there that we need to address and how can we use and get um, uh, economic in having a boar, entire boar production and also use the boar tainted meat in, in different ways. That's also an issue that is uh, important to look further into. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Jürgen, uh, may I uh, come to you? Uh, we uh, learned this spring uh, that you were involved in an initiative to produce and market 100,000 immunovaccinated pigs in Germany. Could you uh, tell us more about this? Yes, uh, I can. Um, in Germany, we know um, since uh, quite a while that um, we have to end uh, with the castration without uh, pain relief at the end of this year. And uh, so we need uh, more solutions um, um, to come um, to, to get solutions for the farmers. And uh, um, immune castration is one of the solutions for us. Uh, we need different solutions for different farms and for different farmers. And um, at uh, the beginning of uh, the last year, um, beginning of uh, 2019, um, we saw that uh, the market uh, of uh, immune castrated uh, pigs was uh, very, very small in Germany. And um, we tried um, with our um, uh, initiative um, to open the market and uh, to um, go to the slaughterhouses uh, to say we got the pigs uh, with the immune castrated uh, system and um, we got the pigs, the farmers are uh, willing to, to um, try the production of this and um, to um, open the discussion about this. And um, uh, we uh, have had in the last year a very slow start and um, um, we have had a lot of discussions uh, with the uh, different slaughterhouses. And um, at uh, the uh, start of this year, um, everything uh, gets to run and um, in this summer we um, place all the 100,000 pigs uh, at the market. So uh, it was a really a successful uh, initi uh, initiative um, and uh, we, um, yes, we opened the market for these pigs. Yeah, okay. Um, maybe uh, we could have the question of Niels uh, Weitz here. It was on a retail and uh, accepting uh, immunocastration. Uh, maybe, Robert, you could uh, reflect on this. Uh, with the question on uh, uh, retailers accepting yes or no immunocastration in Germany. Uh, it's different. Um, we have some retailers which clearly um, showed that uh, they are willing to accept uh, meat which is coming from you know, monocastrated pigs. Um, we have other retailers which clearly informed their um, suppliers that they will not accept meat which is coming from Improvac or um, entire males. So <clears throat> it's um, really different. It depends uh, on on the retailer, it depends, uh, of course, um, on the the way or the strategy which they have uh, for for the future. So it uh, depends on the marketing strategy, I would say, and of course um, the. Sometimes uh, it depends on the the people which are responsible to to okay. buy the meat. Thank you. That's clear. May I now go to uh, Francois? Francois, we learned just before the summer that uh, French uh, ten uh, French producer organizations, uh, in a letter to their uh, breeder, stated that as of January 2022, uh, and I uh, phrase now uh, try to translate it: the basic price will be the average price of the population of female pigs, entire males 
and not anymore non-castrated males as is currently the case. Uh, this has been published somewhere in June. Uh, could you tell about more about this, the background of this decision and what it does mean? Yeah, I, I think there's a small mistake. It just, um, the average place, it should be about anti-male or female, not castrate pigs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, it's this decision it's to have, because in France we consider if tomorrow we continue to castrate pigs with anesthesia, they must be have a cost more expensive for the farmers because we should be buy the product or if if it's a vet to do this, we should be paid this. And it's the reason why the organization of the producer uh, write this paper. It's to say to the slaughterhouse, if in the future you want to have a castrate pig, you should be pay an extra, an extra cost than the entire male or the female. It's this. And this, uh, this uh, letter should, must be right after the declaration of the, of, the, of the minister in January, where he say we should be have the pigs in France uh, castrate with anesthesia in 2022. Okay, thank you. Uh, I see, Daniel, that you saw a question regarding carcass grading. Uh, yes, I spotted a question in the chat, uh, and the question is uh, whether in the near future the, the sex uh, of, an, of a pig should be uh, an element of the carcass grading. Uh, um, it is not said who we should address the question to, but I think this could be something for Derek. Uh, Derek? Yes, sorry, I had to unmute. Um, well, um, yeah, the grading of the of the carcasses is a that is that is all derived from European legislation. Um, of course, um, I can understand the question from the perspective that if there are huge differences and the entire distribution of what we can expect at the slaughterhouse is wider, um, one should one could also have a look at um, at those uh, those aspects of the of the legislation. Um, but for now, and I think with the experience we had in the Netherlands, I think we can, I can say that we can work uh, very, uh, very easily with the, with the current setting of the, um, uh, of the syrup system. Um, but yeah, that is, that I think that is all um, part of a, a wider debate that we could have. But as we see, as we see it here in the Netherlands, uh, we can work very, very easily with the current system uh, yeah. as well. Yeah. Maybe that uh, we also now can, <coughs> I would like to ask you, Derek, <coughs> we all uh, discuss the complexity, the difficulty, uh, but somehow uh, seven, six, seven years ago, uh, you and some other slaughter companies in the Netherlands uh, shifted towards uh, producing and marketing entire meal pigs. And now looking back, back those six, seven years, uh, could you share with us the, the experiences? How do you look back? And especially also, how do your clients look back to this decision? Mm. Yeah, of course. So, um, yes, we shifted uh, six, seven years ago uh, to boar production for the, for the Dutch retail. Um, yeah. Before that, we already produced for, um, uh, for retailers outside, uh, outside of, uh, out of the Netherlands with this specific question. So we have quite an extensive experience with raising boars, um, depending, of course, a bit on the, um, on the, um, on, on the level. And the levels have, uh, have uh, increased after uh, that we started in, uh, with that uh, initiative in the Netherlands in uh, around 2014. Um, and... As you see, at least I always, I always try to um, perceive it, food is all about emotion. And, um, and uh, what we saw that from the retail perspective, there was a, a, a increased demand in uh, um, specifically pointing towards animal welfare types of issues in pig production. And that was one of the reasons uh, Dutch NGOs uh, together with, uh, with the retailers uh, instigated this initiative in uh, in growing boars, 
and we were one of the the, the first uh, companies to to jump in uh, with our experience to make this a success. And I think looking back, um, well, the, the proof of the pudding is in eating, and it is the same thing with with pork. Um, if I look back, I think uh, our clients, which are retailers, but also the clients of these retailers, us consumers, um, we have not seen any issues with uh, with higher uh, problems with with boar taint. Uh, of course, due to a very strict uh, procedures in our slaughterhouses in boar taint detection. Um, I think our retailers, retail um, clients are are very happy that we were able to translate to translate those uh, new requirements from the market in uh, in the supply chain we were able to deliver and uh, it's not just about a uh, client perspective i also think that we managed to um, to do this together with our farmer partners to um, and 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 help them and help each other to um, to manage um, uh, keeping uh, keeping boars at their uh, at their farms okay Okay, thank you. Now, Miguel, uh, 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 Spain has already a long history also in producing and marketing entire meals. But of course, you have also a market with very high quality uh, products, uh, which uh, for those high quality products, uh, the question is, of course, also how can you realize market acceptance for that? Uh, What are, in your opinion, relevant directions for solutions to in the future also for these high quality products that you produce in Spain uh, to use non-castrated animals. What are your ideas on that, Miguel? Yeah, I, I, I think, and also I agree with you, we have a lot of experience of producing entire meal, and also we have a lot of experience to produce high quality products and traditional products for Spain, and we have divided perfectly the production, so we know perfectly how to make and work with entire meal, have not any problem at all, but uh, we know that there are special productions that uh, need a uh, special management, that is the, the traditional high quality products that I agree also with your project, that, that this kind of quality of the carcass and also the intramuscular fat is very, very important to the dry cure product and also for another product. Right now, what, until this moment, we are, we are of course castrated this animal because when we try to move for the entire male, for this kind of production, it's quite impossible because these animals are heavy pigs and also we are talking about the Iberico production, that the Iberico, the boar ten is more intensive. So we have to be clear that in, in, in this case of animals with 150 kilos of light weight, the probability of half boar chain is very, very high. So it has to be rejected to, to, to produce entire male. What is the other options that we are working on? The other option, of course, is the anesthesia. But the anesthesia is something that the, that, the, that, the, that the farmer is not happy a lot with that. For the farmers, because of course it's a cost, it's a high cost in the anesthesia, and also you have the same management to, to the castrate the animals. And the other issue is for score for the veterinarian, because there are not any product that is approval to the use of anesthetic in pigs in Spain. So you have to make an exceptional prescription, and this is involved for more legislative issues. So for the veterinarians and the farmers, the, I think that the anesthesia is not, is not a final solution. By the traditional products, the traditional products, we have a problem. That is the legislation. I think it's the same option that we were talking uh, about the, the, the organic production. Some of the, of the DOPs in Europe, in the, in the skin, in the labeling, you have to use castrated animals. So we are talking about the animal welfare, the quality products. So the first option is to change the references of the production because in some of them, in Spain and also in Italy, it's mandatory to castrate the animals and we can use another one. And for us, of course, now the system and we are developing is the, the immunocastration. The immunocastration allows to produce animal without entire milk, entire, without bortain, and also increase the quality of the meat and you have not any problem in the process of this of this cure products. So this is, I think, the option. And now we are also changing a little bit the production in Spain. It's, it's something different. We are used to produce entire milk, and some of the production are moving to another high quality production. These producers that are used to produce pigs without any castrations, it's very difficult to convince these producers to start to castrate another time. So they are very often to use the immunocastration because if you are working all your life with entire males and you are going to change for a 
better quality meat productions. The correct yeah. way is go directly for the immunocastration because you are not used to use the castration for the farmers. It's a practice that they don't want to do. So if we have another alternative, it's very useful at the moment. For the traditional product, we have to change the, the legislation, but the best option that we are using for the farmer point of view, of course, is the immunocastration because it's costly effective. You have not any problem with the protein and also the meat quality for the industry is very good. Thank you. There's also a question here I see from uh, Giuseppe B to also to Derek Orberg also on quality, uh, uh, not about only about protein, uh, Derek, but what about quality? Um, well, the general quality, as we've seen also in the presentations uh, earlier, um, I don't think that we see any issues uh, specifically with uh, with the boars in our production of, of many years. Um, and, and of, of course, this also can have to do with, uh, as, um, as my colleague just uh, just said, that they use bigger types of animals going up to 150 and maybe plus kilos. Um, but yeah, we don't see any problems with um, uh, with the quality uh, other than um, than boar taint, uh, like like lean meat or not. You still have your entire group of, of female uh, animals and they all are in a certain distribution. So in that entire group, uh, there is plenty of, of raw materials to source to, um, uh, to supply our, uh, our customers with. And I think as, as we've seen in the presentations, there are ways to, to, to manage uh, the quality of the, um, uh, of the end product yeah. also yeah. In, the, in the live phase. Yeah, this will also be uh, depending, of course, on the distribution uh, and uh, the, the, the distribution channels in the market that you have. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Absolutely. Okay. As Trine also said, uh, there, is an, that there is the balance, the entire carcass balance yeah. um, uh, as well to consider. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, there was also a question to you, Derek, about the inclusion of sex and different treatments of male pigs in the graduation system. Uh, that would open the opportunity to include additional cost and payment to farmers. And maybe it would increase acceptance of retailers. What do you think? I, I, I don't really understand this. Could you rephrase? So, because so, we, we talked about earlier about the grading system and yeah. if there should be, an, and, and now the other angle is? The question is, uh, Derek Urbeck, thank you for your question, answer, but inclusion of sex and different treatments of male pigs in graduation system would open the opportunity to include additional cost in payment to farmers and maybe it would increase acceptance of retailers. What do you think? Well, um, uh, there are many different ways of trying to balance the cost in a chain. And maybe your solution as has been proposed um, by, the, by the person who asked the question, could work for the situation that you are in. If I look at the situation that we come from in the Netherlands, and again, I'm just a very practical uh, type of, of person, is that um, uh, it should be part of multiple requirements in producing um, pigs under a certain scheme. And boar, having intact boars is just one of the, of intact, intact males, I should say, um, is just uh, one, of the, um, one of the issues in the in the frame when you produce for certain uh, markets retailers um, and from the demand side you should raise um, the value to pay the costs in the in the um, in the supply chain so that is how we how it worked out in the Dutch system um, we produced quite an extensive uh, amount of animals under that specific scheme which uh, prescribes the use of intact uh, male animals and at the end, those, um, those, uh, those costs were covered by additional value. Thank you. So there are different ways of doing that. This could be a way. I personally, but that's my personal opinion, I always think that if the market demands something, the market should, uh, should also pay for it. Thank you. We have now a few minutes left. So what I will do now to the panelists, I will give each of you uh, one final round uh, to... Uh, to present, uh, given the discussion and the presentations, what is your take home message for the, uh, the, for the audience? Uh, and uh, may I start with uh, you, Robert, uh, with a final round, what is the take home message for the audience, in your opinion? 
<clears throat> yes, uh, thank you. Um, I would say the take home message for me, especially is uh, we should work um, more intensive on the alternatives for surgical castration to show what advantage is to do bore fattening, to show what is the alternative with immunocastration, but not to um, <sighs> Um, how I say to put blame on castration with anesthesia because we have some regional products, we have some regional structures, we have different kind of pigs. And so for some farmers and for some production scheme, it's necessary to keep for not only for a short term, but of, uh, I'm sure for a midterm, um, the castration with anesthesia. And so to um, show all the stakeholders that um, these are good ways um, to improve animal welfare. Thank you very much. Joran. Yes, I think uh, I, I told that uh, we need different systems for different farms. And uh, I think uh, it's very important uh, also to, to get uh, the immunocastration um, at one part, uh, to be one part of the system. And uh, I think uh, there are a lot of uh, pros and uh, cons uh, also in this system uh, for sure. But um, I think, um, uh, especially if you take a look at the uh, animal welfare, uh, discussion. Uh, you got a lot of uh, positive uh, things uh, that you can find in, in this system. And uh, so um, for us in Germany, it's really, uh, really important that uh, we uh, open more the market than uh, we have done um, until yet. And uh, we need we need uh, also uh, the support of our partners and uh, also uh, the support of the slaughters and uh, everybody who uh, sells our pigs. Thank you very much. François? François Rouet from Brittany. Yeah. Uh, no, no more answer about uh, this. Okay, thank you. Trine? Yes, I think uh, with the Cipema project, uh, you have really managed to come up with good guidelines for how to manage entire males throughout the value chain. There are good recommendations in, in all steps. And uh, as one of my colleagues have read in the Q&A, uh, right now we are working on the cost benefit of producing uh, castrated males and um, entire males and immune vaccinated males to see what are the cost benefits and also to be able to um, to secure an even distribution of the cost throughout the chain. I think it's important now we have the guidelines, then we also need to find out what are the costs related to it and then see how we can move forward. I'm quite sure from a Danish perspective, there will not only be one road uh, forward. We have now introduced local anesthesia two years ago, but I'm quite sure we will see different roads uh, developing in Denmark, depending on which markets we are supplying. Uh, and then I think it's also one of the take home messages is I think it's important that we all try to make Improvac uh, one of the solutions in the future because it will help us in many ways if we could could open this uh, solution. Thank you very much. Miguel. Thank you. I think and also that the IPEMA project so that is not a unique solutions that are very complex and also it's going to depend also the market, the producers and also the products so that we will see is that the the, the future is clear. We are going to divide the production in two differences, that is entire male. If you can produce lean meat for a special market or improvised production in immunocastration, because at the end, the intermediate solution, that is the anesthesia, is at the end an intermediate solution. Right now, it can be a solution if we cannot go in ahead in the further one, but at the end, we are going to choose the different option depending on the farmers and depending on the market. So for us, the, 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 the most valuable things is to try to be open mind, to know what is the alternatives, what is the market and what is the, the, the farmers and to try to find the best, the best way to, to proceed. Thank you very much. Derek, uh, could you give in a few seconds your take home message? Of course, of course. What I've, what I've learned is that there are plenty of countries in Europe who have extensive experience with keeping intact males, with boars, uh, for a long period of time. So I can only imagine that there are solutions everywhere. And by such a cooperation as here in IPIMA, um, I can only 
be very confident that we find a solution for the ways ahead. Also, um, the research into the consumer and third markets uh, shows us that um, food is all about the experience uh, and thus it is uh, of great importance that we find assurances to make sure that there are no negative uh, experiences with consuming um, meat of and pork of intact animals. So a good board taint uh, detection. Thank you very much. I will now go to the closing uh, remarks. Uh, the closing remarks will be uh, presented by uh, Ms. Anne Gintenhaven. Uh, Anne Gintenhaven is a pig farmer in Groningen in the Netherlands. She is chairman of the Boers on the Way initiative in uh, the Netherlands. But above all, she is a pig farmer with uh, over 20 years of experience in raising uh, entire males. Uh, after uh, the uh, closing remarks of Anne Gien, uh, it will be handed over to Daniel to uh, give the final end to the session. Anne Gien, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I followed the IPEMA network from the start of the network. And I've seen that IPEMA has spread knowledge and uh, did let scientists uh, colla collaborate on a complex issue of the alternatives of uh, castration of male piglets. And a lot of scientists uh, are working on these uh, alternatives. Uh, and it's a very nice thing that uh, in this network, um, there is a collaboration between scientists and stakeholders in the whole supply chain. But we can see in Europe that Europe is uh, moving to castration with anesthesia, immunovaccination, or towards entire males. We are all on a different stage, but the process ir is irreversible. And you have all contributed. So very congratulations and thank you very much all for your uh, efforts. But the work is not ready. It just started. We have steps to be taken. And this is a complex subject with different ways. It is not a subject for one country. Uh, we have to work together in Europe. And I want to emphasize that awareness and knowledge sharing is very important for now and for, in the, for the future. And all stakeholders are responsible. But the European Union has also a responsibility too. Alternatives of castration is a very complex problem. We just heard it today. The EU has the uh, role in facilitating this work. We need to talk to the European Commission about a follow-up. Such a widely supported topic needs further support. So, let's talk, uh, I will close with, go on with the theme of IPEMA, growing ideas through network. And once again, congratulations to everyone. and Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. The final uh, words are for you. Uh, thank you, Anikin, and also uh, thank you, Hei. Um, it is uh, the, the last word, really, and I would say on behalf of the uh, IPMA organizing committee of this uh, webinar meeting, I would like to thank all uh, of the participants and also of, the, of our panelists uh, uh, for your time. Uh, we are grateful for having had the opportunity to, to share our insights uh, and uh, directions for solutions with you. So thank you for participating, um, either uh, by posting questions, uh, but also by spreading the words uh, afterwards. Um, and uh, thanks a lot, of course, uh, to all the IPMA members uh, who had contributed um, over the last years and also for this uh, presentation. And of course, also to the EU for uh, funding this, this truly uh, pan-European network. And, and before I really close the meeting, I would like to have a, a virtual spotlight uh, uh, on and also a special thank you to Michel Bonneau, who has been researching this piglet castration issue and uh, on, on its alternatives for more than uh, 30 years. And um, given the, the unfortunate circumstances due to the sickness of Rika, uh, Michel, it was you who took the, uh, quite, a, quite a burden and uh, you greatly managed uh, uh, to, to end this uh, IPMA cost action so sex, uh, successfully. So a big, big uh, thank you. Um, to you, Michelle. You are welcome. Um, and Thank last but not least, uh, participants. 
um, uh, thank you, Michelle. And, and uh, last but not least, I would like to, uh, to thank also our team in the background, uh, without whom this would not have been possible. Uh, so uh, I can't name uh, all of you, but uh, a big uh, thank you to help making this uh, a success. Uh, with this, I would like to say goodbye to all of you. Uh, take care and uh, stay healthy. And I keep hoping that uh, one day again, we could also welcome you in the, in the city of science, as we call it, our wonderful medieval town of Göttingen in Germany. So uh, goodbye to everyone. Auf Wiedersehen.